Upstairs, uh, freezing cold, Scott from Counterfax. How are you, man? Doing well. Staying warm. Staying warm. That is that does look like a really comfy scarf. It is actually. I, I normally yeah. I normally don't wear a scarf. Uh, you know, I live in California. <laughs> yep. It never gets this cold ever. Nope. <laughs> and uh, so I decided to do this tour, and I've been enjoying it. What'd you get it from? It was a gift from my wife's grandmother. Ah. Yeah, so it's nice to have something to think of home, too. Not something from, like, Heathrow, um, <laughs> duty-free kind of thing, like, I'm going to need this. <laughs> no, I'm not that person, unfortunately. I'm always, like, you know, I have travel and fly so much, but I never think to, like, buy the little, like, you know, the neck Knick-knacks, pillow yeah. or the little trinkets. I always just sort of just go, and then I see all this cool shit, and I'm like, ah, I should have got that. Or... See where all the money goes. <laughs> it's... Right. So I thought ahead for once. <laughs> so it's cool. Just gloves. That's, that's what I need. Yeah. So, um, awesome. So welcome back to the UK. Thank you. Um, how's the tour been? It's been phenomenal. I mean, it, the attendance is just, yeah, it's insane. I think every show has been either sold out or just right at the edge of yeah, sold yeah. out, you know, might as well be. And yeah, what more could you ask for? Yeah. Yeah, warmth. I love the it. Yeah. But not too much of a sweaty show. Just a kind of... I, no, I, well, look, here's the thing. I like sweaty shows. I want it, you know? Put me yeah. put me in the shit. At a club you know? show, yes. But at a, at a venue like this, it'd be I too humidity and stuff like that. And it's fine. I don't like a clean show. You know what I mean? Like, if it's air-conditioned, it's the oh, perfect no. temperature. Oh, no. No, no. It's two prima donnas there. Yeah. I want, it, I want to feel it. I want to work for it. Definitely. <laughs> uh, so the new album is out. Yeah. How's the reception been for that? It's been out for a, a bit, a little while now. It came out in August, so what is that? Five, five months? Five, six months, something like that. Yeah, uh, the reception's been rad. You know, it's it's crazy. It's like it's such a different thing for us. You know, we're so used to like looking at record sales and like you know how many CDs did we sell? Yeah, yeah. And you know, we we saw the CD sales go down, which you, you know, at one side you're like. Oh, what does that mean? Yeah. But then our ticket sales and our streams this year are, are like way, way up. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, it's we're just trying, you know, for us, I think we're really just trying to figure out how to best like weaponize streaming. Yeah. You know, I think like everyone's trying to figure their head around the streaming. Yeah. Stream. Like, do we drop EPs every year or, or just big albums yeah. or just a song a month? I think, I'm not sure, you know. We're I trying think to figure Down out. had an idea of doing something like that, where they would drop four EPs a year, like every every three months or every okay. four months. Every quarter. Yeah, mm, and I was like, very oh, that's really cool. But then <laughs> it's been on Samuel, so that kind of just, I think they did too. Yeah. And they just they're went, like, oh. They're, they're like, God, an EP every three months is actually, is actually kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I quite like that because it's, uh, instead of going, here's a body of work, and then people yeah. being impatient and wanting it, you just give them that small drip feed kind of thing? Yeah, it's weird. I, You know, we did the, the Bury Me in Blasphemy EP with the covers on it. And I think it was weird, but it's still, like, people listen to that stuff. Like, I don't know that we'll really play much of that stuff live. And obviously, like, the Ghost remix yeah, of yeah. the cover is super weird. But still, that song's got a ton of streams on it. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll just keep experimenting, you yeah. know? Yeah. Just trying to figure out. How the fuck streaming works and how to make money off it? Well, like, <laughs> there's no money to be made off of off of physically, you know, the, yeah. the streaming itself. But the hope is, you you reach people in a way that, um, you know, they'll want to come see you at the show you or get a shirt. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, fuck, lost my train of thought there. I was, <laughs> I went on a complete tangent. Um, yeah, no, the album. Yeah, great, because you taught the shit out of. Slow death. We did, yeah. Was it a nice break, or as soon as you stopped, were you just like, kind of just want to... Well, yeah, we did tour the shit out of slow death. That's exactly how I would put it. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that kind of it kind of kicked our ass in a way, or it kicked my ass in a way, uh, just because it was just really intense. The show, you know, we were really trying to really, you know, get the band to the next level. That's yeah. what the last two albums have really been about. yeah, yeah. Bigger production, you know, better videos, um, bigger scope on the albums. Just yeah. really try to just elevate everything as much as we're able to. And, you know, so in doing that, it was like we really had to push the shows and push the touring schedule. So, you know, putting World War X out in August and then 
you know, we headlined the Summer Slaughter Tour with Cattle, which was fantastic. It was really a great release yeah. tour in the States. It was awesome time. <laughs> like, seriously, one of, the, yeah. one of the best summers we've had. It's just a great time. Uh, all the bands on that tour were so fun. It's, Rivers was on that tour okay, as well. Yeah, yeah. They're on this tour. Just great guys to be with, great musicians as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we, we took the fall off. Um, which we just got done from that break. Uh, you know, we went down to South America with Slipknot uh, for uh, in December. Was that the one in Mexico where the, the barrier broke and <laughs> then they had to we, cancel it? Yeah, that we picked up after that. Oh, okay. that that was like you know Mexico. You know, that's North America still. Okay, Mexico is still North America. So we, that we did the Central and South America ah, portion. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, so we picked up right after that, and we picked up in Costa Rica, and it was phenomenal. Yeah. It was like picturesque against these like jungle mountains you know beautiful clouds like really surreal kind of oh perfect like just the perfect weather to wear a t-shirt but a yeah. nice breeze you're just like wow all right <laughs> hey we'll take it you know it, it was uh really just a perfect show and playing with slipknot was i mean slipknot. they have such a great show so that whole weekend was really fun um and then we went into this you know into the thy art tour and then the idea is, is that you know we got the big spring tour with three teeth um, that we're really trying to just next level rooms, next level level yeah. show, get that attendance up, you know. So that's what we're after right now. So have you figured out which songs are work gonna work live or still we're still, still trying, trying new ones, yeah. So that's yeah, that's the thing. We're still trying new ones because we just have done now, this is just the second tour. <clears throat> Pardon me, the second tour on World War X. So I think on uh the next tour, uh the Meta X tour, we're gonna do uh, some new songs from what we're X that we haven't okay. played yet. Yeah. So this infernal darkness is going in the set for sure. And I think we're going to put the head, like a whole cover in the set. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Did, when you, when you were writing the album, did you figure out like these songs can be played live or they can all be played live? I mean, we could definitely, you know, we can play all of them live for sure. Um, really, I think it just comes down to, you know, like on this tour, for instance, it's like, you know, we have 40 minutes, so that's eight songs. Yeah. You know, we have seven albums. albums yeah. you know, we have seven and two EPs. You know, we have 80 songs to choose from. So we we only get to, from our entire discography, we get to play 10%, basically. Yeah. So, you know, you you go, okay, well, well, the videos have a million views on them and millions of streams. The fans really love those ones. Yeah. So you end up playing the stuff that gets kind of the attention online. You that's know, because cool. that's what the fans know, um, and that's what you want to... You know, you want that interaction. Yeah. I, I don't, I like playing deep, deep cuts sometimes, but if you go, sometimes it throws a fan every now You and go then. too far in, <coughs> and they're kind of like, okay, but I really I'm wanted to hear drink. that one. Yeah, song. I'm gonna get a drink. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I learned that I went to see Smashing Pumpkins maybe four or five years ago. They were doing a tour. And, you know, I've been a fan of the Pumpkins forever. Yeah. But they kind of were doing this like anti hits set. Yeah, they played Download uh, last year, and they were just really off. Was it the same thing? Maybe it was that, like, I don't know. But I don't know. They Billy just went to Jimmy and was like, Jimmy, tell this, this crowd to be more uh, raw. And it was yeah. a bit like, it was, you're just playing weird tracks. Right. Play today. Play but, yeah. know, bullet with the butterfly, butterfly wings. wings. Yeah, in. zero. Let me hear 1979. Yeah. Just play the hits. You're here for one day. You've got 40 minutes. Just okay. play what so I want to hear. You feel my pain. Yeah. Right. So that was my experience at the Pumpkin Show. I was just like, come on, man. It's like, like Slip Not Pain, just stuff off Make, Feed, Kill, Repeat. Yeah. And then like, people going, I, I get ah. that the songs, the hits are old to you. Yeah. But I've never seen the Pumpkins before. No, I'd never so seen So I them was before. really excited to see 1979 live. So I want to do the same for our fans you know obviously we've been playing you know the stuff from the first album for 15 years yeah but they may be seeing us for the first time or maybe they haven't seen us for a couple years yeah so yeah, yeah you try to put together a set that's fun for the band and the crowd like an enticing set like Absolutely. this is like an appetizer almost let's just ha we're here to have fun yeah that's, we're here that's to entertain that's what we're doing we're on a stage In to the entertain most aggressive violently sounding music yeah <laughs> <laughs> aggressive <laughs> entertainment <laughs> yeah. that's what we are <laughs> Coin, <laughs> <laughs> a trademark. Yeah. Um, what was the song uh, on this album that set the tone for the record? Hmm, that's a good question. Hmm, what is? It? Well, you know, I would say it was probably like "No Light," um, the title track, and "This Infernal," because those were like the first three we wrote. Okay. 
um, yeah, so from there, I think we wrote like some really big songs. So I think with like All Roads Lead to Hell and uh, Eyes of the Executioner, we wanted to be like, well, let's just, just kind of do a fastball pitch. Like yeah. not every song needs to be this like, you know, horror rock opera, which is, you know, like that's what we're going for half the yeah. time. Bury Me and Blasphemy is kind of that. We always want to bring in that scale if we can. Um, I would say it was those ones. And then we, you know, you go from there and, and just just try to fill the album out with as much variety as you can you know, within the framework of your album. Yeah. Well, the, t the track that stands out for me is Brushed, and that's quite yeah, towards yeah. the end of it. How did that song come about? Brushed by the Wings of Demons. That is track seven? Yeah, it's towards middle, yeah. middle end. Yeah, I should know, but to be frank, I don't listen to the album. <laughs> it's all on, uh, I had I it on shuffle, so I was like, yeah, oh, yeah it's, it's like, like, uh, like, oh, shit, that's I know, it's like uh, I sequenced it in, in March. And then <laughs> it's like, I mean, I'm not listening to it. We're playing it, yeah. you know? <laughs> so I'm like, is that seven? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, that one, it's just, there. it was just another one in there. We just, you know, that was, Jordan and I worked on that one for a long time, you know? For a lot of those songs, you know, really, they they really grow from pretty meek beginnings, you know, yeah. maybe just a riff or a, a string of riffs together. And they take time to sort of mature into a full, a full piece. And, um, yeah, that one in particular, I know we worked on it for a while and I was really happy with how it came out, you know? Um, whereas in contrast, like all roads lead to hell, that was the only song we wrote in the studio okay. and we wrote that in two hours. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let me figure that one yeah. out. <laughs> It's like no light. We spent probably spent like four months writing no light, yeah. two hours writing another one. So sometimes it works like that. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. yeah, definitely. What was the hardest song to write? The one that just gave you so much ball ache. Oh God! It was you know honestly to be frankly it was probably it was probably the title track because you know you're really trying. It's an album opener. Yeah. You know, so you really want to like set the tone or kind of you yeah, like, this is really get for. yeah really get the listener like off on the right place and you know i wish we still had some time like i don't know i still feel like i was working on that song like with atmosphere and arrangements but you know the clock runs out eventually yeah you have to put that <laughs> homework in yeah you just run out of time and you get you gotta you gotta turn it in you know was it a no-brainer uh calling the album and the the self-titled track the same thing or well yeah you know i had actually had the title in mind um for probably about a year prior um you know and kind of the idea was that you know it's really the whole album's about an internal war you know and x is for what your fight yeah. is you know that that was the whole idea kind of the subtext of the title for me um not just in that song but the theme across the whole album is the internal struggle. Yeah. And I just tried to frame it through, you know, kind of the idea of a physical war when it was still very much internal. I, a lot of the previous albums, they're all very internalized lyrically. Yeah. And I wanted to reverse that and kind of turn it inside out. Okay. And that's why I think the cover is so different. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like a very big cover, whereas our previous covers are very, you know, focused on one single thing, yeah. you know. Um, so that was my idea with, with World War X. And then I've already started working on the next one. And I've like gone just right back the other way. I want to do like a very interior album again. Wow. You know? That would be kind of cool. Almost like a double album, but with no, uh, not being dropped on the same day. Yeah, well, it's almost like a, a mirror album. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Like, like an opposite. Like a above and below. Okay. You know? Like Upside it, down. Yeah, it's like the yep. inverse. Yeah. Like I, for some reason, I want to be like... You know, all the themes I embraced on the last one, I, I want to right, do them society. backwards and see what comes out. That's pretty cool. It's like Stranger Things kind of stuff. Yeah, I suppose it is. Yeah, kind of <laughs> like what you know, what happens if you just if you flip everything, you yeah. know, or kind of like switch your, your point of view. And I think, you know, now with you know Jordan having left the band and it's back to the original four, you know, I think it's this exciting time where we're sort of taking all this knowledge we have of the seven albums and and um, just how the band has evolved over the yeah. last 15 years. But then also kind of looking at like our original, you know, our original moment. Debut kind of thing. 
Yeah, and seeing like, well, if we go back and kind of take that mindset, but with the tools that we have now and the songwriting knowledge that we have now, and then, you know, the extra layers of bullshit that we throw on now, yeah, yeah. like, what would that album be like? You know, what would, be, what would that, like, industrial Dead in My Arms album be? How and much it, time would you need on that, though? I feel like it would, I feel like it would come fast. I feel like it would be, like, raw. It would either come really fast or really slow because... Yeah, I, I, like I, I'm, like, feeling perfect. it already. We've, I, I, you know, I gotta be honest, we've always, already kind of been talking about this. Is it, does it get much writing or just the, idea throw in on the road or... Well, you, you know, downtime? writing a record is so much more than holding an instrument. You have to know where you're going when you start writing. And for us especially, um, having a continuity of tone across the album is super important. Yeah. You know, that's why Slow Death has that, like that, it sounds like, it has a very particular sound. It mm. doesn't sound like World War X, you no. know, it, because we wanted a very specific continuity of tone the whole time. And same with World War X and then same with this next one is that continuity of tone is super important for us. So, by discussing it first, like really what we're trying to blend, like just in a, just verbally, when we sit down to write and when we're arranging, we already have like this, you know, picture board in our mind. Yeah. This, you know, kind of like what's, what are the shades we're going for, you know? This is also a staple in time. So like Slow Death is 2016 yeah. as well. So it is. To, that's to, look, true. to look at the future, you'd have to, don't want to bring in synths and shit like that, but. I you or know, mumble rap or something or something really bad. <laughs> oh no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be like that kind of no. genre blending. No, I think it would just be more like, I don't know. I, I mean, I always liked the industrial stuff and the goth stuff. We 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 did a lot of that on Slow Death, and then sort of walked away from it on World War X to go with kind of you know we kind of went with a more classical score, kind mm. of more of like a war score. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to go get goth again, you know? Yeah, definitely. We'll get some <laughs> early Nine Inch Nails and uh, yeah. Some yeah. Gary Newman. Yeah, Gary Newman. Yeah, get some like KMFDM stuff in there. Kind of yeah. like nasty and American industrial, you know? <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? I don't know. I think it could be heavy. Like some just like gnarly deathcore breakdowns. Some good It'd be industrial. a great, some, not a surprise album because you'd obviously promote the shit out of it. But it would, right. It would, it would, It'd be a nice would, twist, like, right? Huh? Like, I don't know. Like, and that's the thing for us. It's like, okay, so we're at 15 years already. So by the time that our next record comes out, we're going to be at like 16 or 17 Are you going to tour the shit out of this one for the next like two, three years? Or are you going to... I don't know. I don't, I don't think we will as much just because we've really like... Um, because we went so hard on Slow Death, I think we all wanted to like go easier on this album. A year, year and a half kind of... Yeah, it was just like, I think it's, yeah, and also we want to, you know, for the fans, like, if we're here every quarter, you know, it's yeah. like, okay, cool, like, you're really going to come out on a Wednesday night four or five times a year? Maybe not. Yeah. So, we figure if we come out maybe twice a year, it'll be more of a fun night. Yeah. And if we can get bigger turnouts, it means we can do a bigger show. Yeah. We can up our entertainment value, which is really what we're like. We really want to make it a fun show. That's yeah. our whole goal is like people just to be like, wow, that was a great time, you know? Um, and so that that's kind of our aim now is like less is more as far as like playing yeah. live. Not, not in that we're not touring, just trying to be more strategic. Selective and... Yeah, because you want to have good turnouts, you yeah. know. And the thing about the music industry is, if you go and do a tour and you, your sales go down from your previous tour, it's it's not just one step back. You know, it's a lot of work to then yeah, to right. just get to where you were. Yeah, you know. So you're just trying to be smart about it. Definitely, Scott. It's been fucking great talking to you. Yeah, man. And I look forward to seeing the show tonight. Right on. And uh, yeah, it's a fucking brutal lineup. It is. <laughs>